so this is a YouTube link where I'm speaking with a colleague about my dad's case who multiple times has gone to the hospital with chest pain and left arm. And so, you know, we're trained to think heart attack, right, Karen? They've, they've educated us heart attack. If your left arm hurts and you have chest pain, go to the hospital. So this is um, the video I'm walking you through one of those scenarios with him and how I ran a coronary calcium scan of his heart and did labs and all this stuff. And essentially, you know, the workup that I ran on him showed him you are a ticking time bomb. You're going, you know, you're, you're not having a heart attack, but you're as close as you can be without having one. So that scared him. He went to the hospital and saw, got all the machines. What do they do for heart attack? They do an EKG, they do an echo, they do a stress test. They did all three of those things on him. They said, Mr. Vartimus, your heart is healthy. You're good. So he leaves relieved, of course, right? Because he's not having a heart attack and because the doctors told him his heart is good. But I'm like, dad, your physiology is 0% different than it was when you walked in the hospital 24 hours ago and the labs we ran 48 hours ago, right? So just because the pump is okay doesn't mean the, the pipes are good, right? We know your pipes aren't good. So unless you go do something about it, you're, you're, you're still set up for the heart attack just like before you went in there, regardless of your clean EKG stress and echo. Um, and, and so, you know, your parents or your family are your worst patients, right? Or your spouse is your worst patient or your worst, whatever you're trying to do. Right. So, um, and so fear motivates him. He'll do what I say for like eight weeks and he'll change his numbers and he'll feel good. And then he'll get lazy and fall back into the habits that will take his numbers back where they were. And this is a, a, a vicious cycle with my dad, just because again, your, your kids are, or your, your family is your worst patient. In this case, your dad's your worst patient. So I love my dad with my whole heart and I want him to do the right things. But again, there's this human nature point. And while he's scared, he'll do it. And then when he's not scared, you know, he, he's, I guess he's hoping that if you don't look, it's not there. Right. So um, this is something we all are susceptible to and we all have to choose each day, you know, even when it's not fun or when we're missing out at a party or whatever, it's like, no, I'm not eating that or I'm not drinking that or I'm not staying up that late or whatever, because I know my overarching goal is this and whatever short-term gratification I would get out of this moves me away from what my real purpose is. So. Isn't it funny though, how you go to the doctors and they tell you you're in range or they tell you your heart's okay. And so they send you home and then you get really, really sick. And they're the uh, same ones that tell you, you only have three months to live. Yeah. They're, they're the ones that plant the, the false, everything's okay. And then they, they're the ones that are planting the false, like you have three months to live. So you have to fight that and get over that. Yeah. Or you have to like buckle down and roll up your sleeves and do the hard work to change what they're telling you is okay when you know it's not. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's not necessarily them at them in quotation marks. Like it's not the, the doctors aren't necessarily doing it from a diabolical perspective or anything. That's just how the system is and how society is. Right. It's, if I feel fine, I'm healthy. If I'm skinny, I'm healthy, but both of those are wrong. Right. The 20% of obese people are metabolically healthy. And a, a, a high number of skinny people are what are called are sarcopenic obesity patients or skinny fat, right? So just because you look a certain way doesn't mean you're metabolically healthy or unhealthy. And definitely just because you feel a, way, a certain way doesn't mean you're healthy or unhealthy because we've all read stories or maybe know people who, you know, ran a marathon last week and died of a heart attack this week. And it's like, but he was so healthy. He just ran a marathon. Well, Marathons aren't healthy to begin with, <laughs> but um, just because he was skinny doesn't mean he was healthy. So uh, it, it, we need that paradigm shift of it's not how you feel, it's how you function. And if we're not tracking function, which lab work helps us do that, you know, wearable devices that are more and more available each day, if you want to have constant EMFs on you, um, do that we, we we need to have actual numbers and data and objective things not just go on feeling because like we talked about last week the feeling thinking loop if i feel good i think i'm okay in this instance and so i continue to act as if and then 
So I keep eating the gluten and drinking the beer and doing the stuff that my dad might do until I have that feeling of chest pain or left arm numbness. And then I think, holy crap, I'm never going to do this again for eight weeks. And then I forget how bad I felt. So now I feel like I'm lack, I'm missing out on fun. So I think different, you know, so we've got, it's that thinking feeling loop. It snaps into every area of our life. Um, so again, we have to control our mind or else our reality will dictate it. And, and again, if you're, if you're not putting energy in from a mind standpoint or from a choice standpoint to grow, then reality is just going to decay you.